My fellow Americans, I'm speaking to you tonight from behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office. In this sacred space, I'm surrounded by portraits of extraordinary American presidents. Thomas Jefferson wrote the immortal words that guide this nation. George Washington showed us presidents are not kings. Abraham Lincoln, who implored us to reject malice. Franklin Roosevelt, who inspired us to reject fear. I revere this office, but I love my country more. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your president. But in the defense of democracy, which is at stake, I think is more important than any title. I draw strength and I find joy in working for the American people. But this sacred task of perfecting our union is not about me. It's about you, your families, your futures. It's about we, the people. We can never forget that. And I never have. I've made it clear that I believe America is at an inflection point. One of those rare moments in history when the decisions we make now will determine our fate of our nation and the world for decades to come. America's going to have to choose between moving forward or backward, between hope and hate, between unity and division. We have to decide do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect, freedom, justice, and democracy? In this moment, we can see those we disagree with, not as enemies, but as, as fellow Americans. Can we do that? Does character and public life still matter? I believe I know the answer to these questions, because I know you, the American people. And I know this. We are a great nation because we are good people. When you elected me to this office, I promise to always level with you to tell you the truth. And the truth, the sacred cause of this country is larger than any one of us. And those of us who cherish that cause, cherish it so much, a cause of American democracy itself, must unite to protect it. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me that I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. I believe my record as president my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future, all merited a second term. But nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. You know, there is a time and a place for long years of experience in public life. But there's also a time and a place for new voices, fresh voices, yes, younger voices. And that time and place is now. Over the next six months, I'll be focused on doing my job as president. That means I'll continue to lower costs for hardworking families, grow our economy. I'll keep defending our personal freedoms and our civil rights from the right to vote to the right to choose. I'll keep calling out hate and extremism. Make it clear there is no place, no place in America for political violence or any violence at ever, period. I'm going to keep, keep speaking out to protect our kids from gun violence, our planet from climate crisis that is the existential threat. And I will keep fighting my, for my cancer moonshot so we can end cancer as we know it, because we can do it. And I'm going to call for a Supreme Court reform, because this is critical to our democracy, Supreme Court reform. You know, I will keep working to ensure America remains strong and secure and the leader of the free world. I'm the first president in this century to report to the American people that the United States is not at war anywhere in the world. We'll keep rallying a coalition of proud nations to stop Putin from taking over Ukraine and doing more damage. We'll keep NATO stronger, and I'll make it more powerful and more united than any time in all of our history. I'll keep doing the same for our allies in the Pacific. 
You know, when I came to office, the conventional wisdom was that China would inevitably, would inevitably pass the United, surpass the United States. That's not the case anymore. And I'm going to keep working to end the war in Gaza, bring home all the hostages, and bring peace and security to the Middle East and end this war. We're also working around the clock to bring home Americans being unjustly detained all around the world. You know, We've come so far since my inauguration. On that day, I told you, as I stood in that winter, we were stood in a winter of peril and a winter of possibilities. Peril and possibilities. We're in the grip of the war. We were in the grip of the worst pandemic in a century. The worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. The worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. We came together as Americans, and we got through it. We emerged stronger, more prosperous, and more secure. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world, creating nearly 16 million new jobs a record. Wages are up. Inflation continues to come down. The racial wealth gap is the lowest it's been in 20 years. We're literally rebuilding our entire nation, urban, suburban, rural, and tribal communities. Manufacturing has come back to America. We're leading the world again in chips and science and innovation. We finally beat Big Pharma after all these years to lower the cost of prescription drugs for seniors. And I'm going to keep fighting to make sure we lower the cost for everyone, not just seniors. More people have health care today in America than ever before. And I signed one of the most significant laws helping millions of veterans and their families who are exposed to toxic materials. You know? most significant climate law ever, ever in the history of the world. The first major gun safety law in 30 years. And today, violent, the violent crime rate is at a 50-year low. We're also securing our border. Border crossings are lower today than when the previous administration left office. I've kept my commitment to appoint the first black woman to the Supreme Court of the United States of America. I also kept my commitment to have an administration that looks like America and be a president for all Americans. That's what I've done. I ran for president four years ago because I believed and still do that the soul of America was at stake. The very nature of who we are was at stake. And that's still the case. America's an idea. An idea stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It's the most powerful idea in the history of the world. That idea is that we hold these truths to be self-evident. We're all created equal. In Dalbar, created are certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. We've never fully lived up to it, to this sacred idea, but we've never walked away from it either. And I do not believe the American people will walk away from it now. Just a few months, the American people will choose the course of America's future. I made my choice. I've made my views known. I would like to thank our great Vice President Kamala Harris. She's experienced. She's tough. She's capable. She's been an incredible partner to me and a leader for our country. Now the choice is up to you, the American people. When you make that choice, Remember the words of Benjamin Franklin hanging on my wall here in the Oval Office, alongside the busts of Dr. King and Rosa Parks and Cesar Chavez. When Ben Franklin was asked, as he emerged from the, 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 the convention going on, whether the founders have given America a monarchy or a republic, Franklin's response was, a republic, if you can keep it. A republic, if you can keep it. Whether we keep our republic is now in your hands. My fellow Americans, it's been the privilege of my life to serve this nation for over 50 years. Nowhere else on earth could a kid with a stutter from modest beginnings in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Claymont, Delaware, one day sit behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office as President of the United States. But here I am. That's what's so special about America. We're a nation of promise and possibilities, of dreamers and doers, 
of ordinary Americans doing extraordinary things. I've given my heart and my soul to our nation, like so many others. I've been blessed a million times in return with the love and support of the American people. I hope you have some idea how grateful I am to all of you. The great thing about America is here, kings and dictators do not rule. The people do. History is in your hands. The power is in your hands. The idea of America lies in your hands. You just have to keep faith, keep the faith. And remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's simply nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. So let's act together, preserve our democracy. God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Thank you. I'm going to work as hard as I can to see that Donald Trump, the most dangerous president in American history, is defeated, and that Kamala Harris is, in fact, the next president of the United States. But before I make a formal announcement, I just want to make certain uh, that the vice president is going to be campaigning on issues that the working class of this country, a working class that has long been forgotten, needs to hear. And I want to just make sure that the vice president will be working with President Biden and with me and others to demand that the wealthiest people in this country start paying their fair share of taxes, that when we have 50 percent of our elderly people living on 30,000 a year or less, that we expand Social Security benefits by lifting the cap on taxable income so the rich start paying their fair share. I want to hear her be strong in contrasting herself with Trump and making it clear that we have got to save this planet from climate change, that we're pro-union, make it easier for workers to join union, we raise the minimum wage to a living wage, that we deal with the fact that we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth. So we got to start focusing on issues that working class people desperately need to hear when 60 percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and too many elderly people, yeah. too many kids are living in poverty. I am going to do everything I can to make sure that she wins. But I just want to hope that in the next few days and, and weeks, uh, we can make sure that we put together a campaign that focuses on the needs of working class. So make no mistake about it, I'm with her. Uh, and I'm going to do everything that they can, that I can, uh, that the progressive movement can, uh, to make sure that uh, she is the next president.